What's up, people of the internet? My name is Zabacab, and today we are doing another gameplay analysis. It's going to be the Challenger with the Black Green Econ Ramp deck up against Sunspan with the Blue Black Aggro deck. So stick around, and hopefully we can learn a bit more about the intricacies of artifacts. So when that game drops, you'll be ready to win matches. All right, so. Um, we have the flop. Looks like the um, heroes are each going to be taking out a creep. We have assault lighters that could be coming down and an untested grunt that could be coming down. My guess is that we're probably going to see an untested grunt coming down from... Oh, this is not me doing this. This is the um, this is the broadcasters at this point. Anyways, my guess is we're going to see an untested grunt because assault lighters aren't actually going to do anything yet. And yeah. And uh, he probably doesn't know, Sunspan probably doesn't know which lane he wants to commit his Assault Letters to quite yet. So I think the Untested Brute, brute is a smart strategy. You get four damage into the core, so it makes sense. In this lane, we could see a Battlefield Control from the Lycan onto the Creep, but yeah, it's not really a great play, not really a need for it, so he's just going to tank it. And in this lane, um, once again, we could see Assault Letters coming down, but... Uh, probably not. He might do it. Yeah, I was about to say in another lane because in of course this lane They wouldn't do any extra damage. So it looks like we are already committing to lane one That's one of the problems with black um, the black blue aggro deck is it's very easy to make mistakes Because you have to make commitments very very early and if you make bad commitments that you're really in a bunch of trouble so my guess is um, Riley the cunning is probably not gonna go on the right he doesn't want to put Riley the Cunning in the left lane because, oh, he's going to the right. Interesting. So he's going like hard aggro on this. He wants to he wants to win the right lane super hard. I guess he's thinking that since Rix is going down. Yeah, that makes sense. Rix is going down. So he needs a hero there to for backup. Zeus is also coming in on the right lane. I'm thinking he probably wants to use that battlefield control to save his um, save his Necrophos. Oh, and looks like we got lucky with the uh, with the arrow. The Phantom Assassin is going to take off. Oh, never mind. he's got pick off. There's no longer a need. That's going to spare what twelve tower damage. So not necessarily a bad play at all. Lycan is probably going to get this kill. My guess is Sun's fan is probably just going to eat the damage and take the five gold, um, or give the five gold to the opponent, because I mean, well, I, I guess if he does use battlefield control then they'll trade next turn so it wouldn't be the end of the world it's not a bad option necessarily the thing is i don't know what he okay i was about to say i don't know what he intends to do with um i don't know what he intends to do with it in the third lane but i guess he's not using it all and uh we didn't see mr avernus come down i'm a little bit surprised the challenger didn't do that especially considering the right lane is so stacked with so many people i actually probably would have used mr avernus right there personally so you can get those six buffs on all these people it's so strong man but uh no he he did it in this lane that's an odd play i think that was a misplay if he had done mr avernus in lane two then he would have gotten the buff on all these creep but instead, because he delayed it, he uh, he missed the buffs. I think that was a mistake. Unfortunately, we're going to have to wait. We got Abaddon hanging out here in the mists. So, Debbie's set to deal 9 damage to the tower next turn. We've got 13 gold on the challenger. Mm, these are some pretty expensive items. Not really great choices. You could pick up the, the fountain flask, but the thing about the econ ramp deck is you want to have as much gold as possible so you can payday. So, it makes sense that he would choose that option plus all of his heroes have a decent amount of health right now so not much of a need i think we're probably going to see a hero come down in the left lane to take out the untested brutes but maybe maybe not we'll see yeah, yeah okay so the ricks is probably going to take that out and we got more creep coming in on the right lane for sun's fan and crystal maiden showing up in the mid so at five mana we're probably going to see um a Reptail Convoy and or a Truth to Power. Yeah, those are his only options. He literally can't cast anything else. Man, this Phantom Assassin, she does not like to hit the tower. We're really missing out on a bunch of damage because she keeps smacking other things. I don't think we're going to see a Reptail in this lane. It's a little bit overkill. Like we've already got two heroes here. We don't need to overinvest. But fortunately for the Challenger, he has pressured out Sunspan. So these Assault Ladders aren't going to get a lot of mobs. This is exactly what I mean about black sort of making mistakes early on because it's so difficult to predict ahead and know which lane needs to have assault ladders 
So Sorla Khan is kind of a gamble, right? He gambled on lane one and it looks like currently that is not paying off. So I think we, Truth to Power will be worthless here. So yeah, it would make sense to do Reptile Convoy because obviously if you silence one of these heroes, then you've still got blue mana from the other. So there's not much of a point. Traveler's Cloak is going to save my boy Jamoy from Lycan, but Crystal Maiden, Crystal Maiden, poor Crystal Maiden is taking four damage to the face. She's so squishy. And um, a strafing run would do wonders right here. Oh my God. So if he were smart, he would Truth to Power right off the bat. Right off the bat. Right now. Do not waste time. If he doesn't Truth to Power this Zeus, then all of his creep are going to die. Oh no. That was a mistake. That was a terrible mistake. So fortunately for the challenger, Zeus can't cast anything else, but God, truth to power, you really should have cast that. There, I think, of course, he didn't know that he had a strafing one in his hand, but still, I mean, five mana, it's, it's likely that he had something to cast, maybe a con flag. So I think truth to power would have been a good call. Plus, this hand's so expensive, he's not really going to get a chance to cast Truth to Power later on because his, his mana is probably going to get sucked up from other effects. So now he's got a um, two black spells he can cast. He can cast Coup de Gras and Truth to Power. So he's got... All right, Sorla Khan is going into the first lane. I'm guessing he's probably just going to Coup de Gras the Sorla Khan right off the bat. Though... <sighs> it's late, sorry. I have not been sleeping because I've been making so many videos. He might not... No, he probably will. He probably will. Coup de gras. I think that's that's probably pretty likely. Just because... Uh, I mean, there's a good chance he's going to lose a really powerful card like a Steam Cannon or a Thunderhide pack. But, you know, saving your Sword of Khan is not a bad call. Plus, we can't get any tower damage because all the arrows keep... Tanking everything. Yeah, okay. So it takes out the truth of power, not the end of the world. And now we've got a bunch of tower damage coming through. And in the mid lane, we have two blue heroes. Frostbite, my guess is going to come down on who knows, the Lycan? Yeah. That's going to save Jamoy, which is smart because he'll be able to use his ability next turn for a free card draw. And unfortunately, uh, the challenger will not be able to cast anything. So a little bit of a, a little bit of a disadvantage here for our challenger, but he's looking in pretty good position in lane one. He's actually in pretty good position in this lane as well, and he's in decent position in lane three. So at the moment, things are looking quite well for the challenger. Actually, he's got a pretty good chance at this. Heartstopper or takes out Riley the Cunning. Let's see, Truth to Power isn't going to do him much good because he's got two hero because Sunspan has two heroes, so he doesn't know which one of these heroes needs the mana. So I guess the smart thing to do would be probably uh, probably mists in one of these lanes. Could be, he could do any of these lanes to be honest. Lane two would probably get the most mileage because there's a lot of creatures in there. And Necrophose is gonna slowly kill uh, whoever with the Heartstop or Heartstopper or so. I don't know if mists is, yeah, yeah, okay. That's what I thought, Mist in lane two. Not a bad play. And then, I guess he could just pass. Um, if he keeps Chin here for another turn, then he can steal that untested brute next turn with his ability. Because um, the black blue deck doesn't play a whole lot of really massive creature creep. So it makes sense to. Oh, wait, what just happened? Oh, he scrolled Town Portal. Okay. So he is redeploying his Chin. I'm guessing he is abandoning this lane three in order to take lane two. Uh, because lane one looks like lane one is just going to be an eventual win. Oh my god. So Necropos is doing four piercing damage. Oh man. That's that's a lot of damage. And uh, oh, Necropos is leaving. So Sunsfan is thinking this lane is is handled. These All these creepies, untested brutes are absolutely going to destroy this tower. So I need to deploy my Necropos someplace else because he can one shot creep actually which is really powerful but our challenger has some really expensive cards coming out steam cannon almost certainly in lane one hand of god maybe lane two coup de gras potentially for um i don't know it could be on anything if necropus is going on on lane one i'm expecting coup de gras in that lane 
Oh, but it's going to kill Rex right off the bat just by existing. Smart play from Sunspan. So just as soon as the turn starts, the, the Heart Stopper Aura is going to kill this Rix, which means no green mana. Yep. And uh, Coup de Gras is looking pretty tempting. Because if he doesn't kill Necropos this turn, then Necropos is certainly going to kill the uh, the Necropos. And we need Phantom Assassin to hit this tower a couple times because he's kind of relying on this tower to go down. Because he's already abandoned lane 3, so he needs lane 1 definitely. So... I think Coup de Gras is not a bad play. He also might even want a healing salve. I'm not sure what uh, what the hell situation is of Chin in lane... What is that? Lane 2? A Glody Vandal coming out for the block. So he could pick off if he wanted to. I think that's probably the smarter play would be Coup de Gras because a Glody Vandal plus next turn's Heartstopper Aura will just kill Phantom Assassin, which is not a great position to be in. Alternatively, he could Steam Cannon and then one-shot the Aglody Vandal and just... Uh, but the thing is, Phantom Assassin will not destroy the tower before Necrophos kills her, which means he's going to have to invest more in this lane anyways. Okay, so he put he put Steam Cannon in lane 1, and that was a mistake. There's basically never a reason to put Steam Cannon in a later lane when you could put it in a first lane, because the uh, earlier your lane with Steam Cannon, the more options you have to use it. You know, the sooner you can use it. So I think that was a pretty substantial mistake. Uh, I think it's likely that Jamoy is going to use his ability. Oh no, he healed him up. Yeah, that was a smart play actually. That's going to save him from the steam cannon. So we're probably going to see that come down on the Crystal Maiden. Um, and he and actually he can't cast any other blue spells because uh, he has no blue spells. Sun's fan doesn't. So, I think the smart plays here, Hand of God's not going to do much good. Truth to Power makes no impact, but he doesn't know that, of course. He could Reb Tail, but that might be overkill. He could pick off. Um, but I don't know what he would want to pick off. Maybe one of these creep to save one of his creep, possibly. That might be a, a little bit excessive. Now, see, if he had... No, that would but next turn, he'll be able to Thunder Hide Pack, which would be excellent. The question is, which lane is he going to want to do that in? Probably the first lane, because second lane is looking pretty strong. Okay, Truth to Power does nothing here, but he doesn't know that. Unfortunate for him. Okay, so my guess is we're going to start seeing some pretty heavy aggression in lane one. I think that's probably where all three heroes are going to be going. Uh, this lane's, lane three is a wash. He should abandon that. Lane two is one. Yeah, yeah. So he should put all of his stuff in lane one. And start, because he just has to do 15 tower damage. And uh, he's one. Plus, Phantom Assassin is going down to the Heart Heartstopper Aura as soon as the, the turn starts. Let's see where he places his hero. Yep. Putting that over there. Where are you putting Rix? Not mid. You don't. Okay. Smart call. Smart call. So, this turn, we can. We'll probably see a Thunderhide pack, I think, is the most obvious play. Right. We got two green heroes, so there's no way he's going to stop it. See, this is why you want Steam Cannon in lane one. Because if you put Steam Cannon in lane one, then obviously he'd be able to use it on these on these uh, units. But because he put the Steam Cannon in lane two, that's just not an option. So, so I think that was a pretty significant mistake. Um, I'm thinking Thunderhide. Thunderhide pack is not a bad call. Unfortunately, it has to go down in front of the creep, but it's not a big deal because it'll still siege into the uh, tower anyways, and it's so huge that it can easily survive. Hmm, I don't know about that. That saves Debbie, but I think developing the Thunderhide pack probably would have been a smarter call because uh, the blue-black deck is really going to struggle with dealing with that. And, uh, I mean, he's not killing Necrophos. Basically, all, the, all this is doing is it's just saving... Debbie from dying. Savage Wolf. Um. So the Aglodi is going to block the Rick's hit. Sunspan is actually doing a really good job of stopping this damage from coming in. Uh, moving Necropost this lane was super, super smart. My guess is we're going to see at least one more Aglodi come down 
Maybe even a Heartstopper War, actually, because if we see a Heartstopper on Necropost or Sorla Khan, then Debbie will get one shot instantly next turn, which would be pretty phenomenal. He has uh, he has four mana, so he'll only be able to cast one. Yeah, yeah, that's that's exactly what he was thinking. So, um, Sorla Khan's going down, and next turn Debbie will instantly die. God, I've never seen a I've never seen a Necropost with three stacks of Heartstopper Or. That's six. Piercing damage. That's insane, man. That's insane. Okay, so we've got, jeez, a, a boatload of tower damage coming in. We're probably going to see um, Steam Cannon come in on one of the creep in lane one. That's what I would do. Because you don't need to invest any more in this lane. So if there's any point in that. So let's, um, let's Steam Cannon to the left on lane one. There's no point in Steam Cannon lane three. That's all, that's lost. We don't even have any heroes there, so we can't save it, even if we wanted to. So, like, what's he thinking? What's he trying to figure out? Yeah, okay. So he's gonna hit the Necrophos. That puts him at one, puts him in um, kill range next turn. And my guess is from here, you just pass, right? You just try to get initiative. Suns fan, my guess is he's probably not going to cast anything here because he doesn't need to and because he wants to keep his initiative. Yeah, so Suns fan has kept initiative for two turns trying to get into uh, the first turn so we can get the maximum advantage. We have um, the Fountain Scroll might not be a bad cost. We can move Chin out of there because we don't need Chin in lane two anymore. Um, fortunately, he's got 25 gold and none of his big items came out. So that was a little bit awkward. Crystal Maiden is showing up in lane one as well. So we'll have, how much mana? Nine mana to play with. We could coup de gras. No, we can't coup de gras because Debbie will die instantly, which means only green mana. So I think it's likely we're going to see Thunderhide Pack show up, right? Start getting that siege damage in. You can put him in front of Crystal Maiden. Oh no. Oh no, this Necrophos is <laughs> freaking invincible. So at this point, I would put Thunderhide Pack all the way over to the right. Because if you put him in any of the other two slots, he's going to start taking damage from Heartstopper Ore. So if you put him all the way to the right, he's going to just kill that creep. And he won't take six freaking piercing damage every turn. So that puts him in an excellent position to start tanking and, and um, just sieging up the tower. So I think I would probably Thunder Hide on the right. And he, he desperately needs a red hero in this lane is what he really, really needs. Crystal Maiden, actually. Wow, so Suns fan's actually on the verge of winning this. Um, Crystal Maiden's going to hit the tower for four. He's only one damage away, and he's got full mana. So he's... <laughs> I think actually he's going to win here. I think not playing Thunder Hide back last turn was a massive mistake. A massive, massive mistake. Because that's two two blocks that he missed out on, essentially, and a bunch of Siege. So I think it's probably too late for our friend, the Challenger, at this point. Yeah, here comes the Thunderhide pack, and it comes there. See, at this point, I don't know if it's going to be enough to block the creep. I kind of feel like you need to block Crystal Maiden. Because he only needs to find five damage, and he has a full hand. Yeah, that's, that's it, man. That's it. That's game. All right, so that's the match. I think that the uh, challenger made a couple of mistakes here. First, they made mistakes with the steam cannon. He definitely should have put that in lane one because he had the opportunity to do it. Secondly, he really should have uh, put that Thunderhide Alpha, that Thunderhide pack out sooner because it would have blocked some hits and it definitely would have um, sieged into the tower and possibly even have won him the game. At, at the very least, it would have slowed down Sunspan enough that would have given him a chance but I think ultimately <laughs> Necrophos, man. Necrophos kind of won Sunspan the game. He really invested heavily in that hero. He expertly redeployed him to the first lane, which was a really smart play. And as a result, Sunspan won the game. So good job, Sunspan. That was actually a pretty impressive play. I think the challenger probably could have won if he'd played that a little bit differently, um, invested his cards a little bit more aggressively instead of holding on to them. Uh, also, there was that bad play earlier with the strafing run when he could have silenced the Zeus, but he didn't. And as a result, he lost a bunch of creep with strafing run. I don't know if that would have changed the game because uh, I think he won the third lane anyways. But still, it's just not 
Not a smart call. No, he lost the third lane. So yeah, he didn't he didn't play that well, man. Anyways, uh, let me know what you think about this video. Let me know what you think about this game. Uh, is there anything else that the challenger could have done to one to win the match? Let me know what you think. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Dabacab out.